All right, I think we're okay now. I think we're finally rolling. We've had to do a little switch around here. <clears throat> Long story short, um, had to have a whole different computer setup here. So hopefully, nothing goes wrong, and nothing more anyway. So I'm like a whole half hour late because uh, of this damn uh, Cintiq Wacom Link issue that has not been resolved yet but um so instead of using my pc i'm using my mobile studio pro to do this so hopefully it doesn't cut out the lag you know it's just because it's like usb hub central now it's usb 3c just anyway sorry so <laughs> uh hopefully hopefully people start coming in um because both i just did not have time to uh throw up a social media post and I'm late as hell, but this will be recorded for posterity. So I guess anyone who wants to watch it later is more than welcome to. Um, so just back on this, um, I caught a bit of the uh, Pixelogic stream, but I've been busy with a project for a client, so I can't really, uh, couldn't really do a whole lot. Um, couldn't focus a whole lot on, on Pixelogic's um, announcement until a little after this um so i'll have to go back and review so i'm sorry i won't be able to answer any deep questions about it i caught some of it um but work had to take priority and figuring out all this all this technical stuff so um anyhow <sighs> can you guys hear me okay everything cool do i take commissions absolutely but tons of mind-blowing questions for you today <laughs> Yeah, I think there was a lot of uh, small updates right here and there for the next version. Uh, I think there's some, some one or two really big things, or at least not really big, but um, pretty useful. Um, but honestly, I have to go back and I have to go back and review all of it because I was just catching little bits here and there. And yeah, this feels extra laggy right now. Fortunately, so at least for uh, ZBrush right now, because I think I have just so many things going on, and I've tried to shut everything down, but I think this computer's a little tired. <laughs> but we'll make do. Uh, so we were working on the hand, I think, last time I was here. Um, Uh, let me see where that's at now. So yeah, I'll only be able to do about an hour because I've got to get back to work. But I did not want to neglect uh, responsibilities. <coughs> oh, there's the corgi. <coughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay. You want a treat? You want a treat? <laughs> Come here, get a treat. Can't lie to him. You good, buddy. No barking. Uh. Fubber, Fubber, you want to do a uh, Blender plus Unity project? Short, want to do VR chat model? Um, okay. I mean, well, modeling's modeling. Um, is there any particular reason why you're you're mentioning Blender? I mean, do it. Does it have to um, just be imported into Blender? Because that's that's super easy. Um, yeah, just depends what you what you need. Uh, no, I think I made this from a base mesh that was already uh, made, uh, Riz. And then I this this was meant for three D printing. So then it was uh you know all kinds of weird, crazy uh, topology because I decimated it, and um, yeah. So now it's it's been Z remeshed and it's still kind of like, you can see there's some really funky topology, some terrible topology here. Um, but I, uh, did I Z remesh it or did I just, um, yeah, I think I did. Or did I just Dynamesh it? Maybe this is Dynamesh actually. I forget. It's been a while. 
I think I might have dynamashed it to uh, to get things to where they needed to be, at least to be usable. Um, Fuber, yeah. So um, if you want to email me, uh, sir or ma'am, <laughs> you can. Uh, that would probably be the easiest way to dialogue about any any projects you'd like to uh, talk about. So if you want to email me, you can email me at daniel at com. You know, or IG, um, Instagram, find a place to message to, uh, which is just Daniel Lyon arts um yeah so either of those is just fine so if anyone has any questions about collaboration or working together uh want to hire me for anything just give me a shout oh it's taking commissions i'm we're wrapping up some projects right now um so always looking to take on more it's been a slow it was a slow year for me i know some people had had some work too, but it was, uh, it wasn't as busy as I was hoping it would be. I mean, I guess I, I kind of took advantage of the break and dabbling a lot more in Unreal and pushing my short film forward slowly, but surely. Um, so yeah, there's been, there's been some upsides to the lockdowns, but I am ready for, oops, I'm ready for life to get back to normal. Interesting, it looks a little weird. Looks kind of rotated. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like it's rotated in the wrong part of the, the wrong joint. That's weird. Um, Okay, Fuber's also Daniel. You know, cool. How you explode a character in ZBrush? Explode a character? I mean, you mean like what with dynamics or something? Because it, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, not sure what you mean by explode. Oh, or do you just mean like just this little this little expose button? The expose button where everything kind of expands out. Is that what you mean? Before we. Before we, how will I explode a character in Seamush? I mean, because what you're asking, if if you want like an actual like realistic kind of like, uh, you know, the boys or something where it's like body horror or stuff, it's just body parts are just blowing up. That's a whole. You need a whole the package. You need to use Maya or uh, Houdini really to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. You might want to clarify a little bit. Like splitting the character to show if a bomb was thrown. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you probably just want to, you know... Uh... You'd probably want to segment them. You know, you want to have them in the pose that they're in right before they explode. So you'd want to make sure that your model was at that last 
is in the pose of that your, your digi double really i guess or unless it's all cg but anyway your your character is in the exact pose in the last frame before they are killed um and so you'd want them to be in that pose and then you'd want to i guess to start segmenting parts you know um all right that looks better it's just wonky kind of thick knuckle too isn't it it's kind of it's realistic but not ideal um arts isn't it terrible i just <laughs> i was talking about this with a female friend of mine the other day and she's like you're awful and i'm like it's just it's just this is how we're trained you know artists we're, we we can identify so many things, imperfections and inaccuracies, and it's not that we expect humanity to live up to that level, but we have to be able to observe and accurately be able to quickly, you know, describe or dictate imperfections in something or disproportions, you know, especially if a client wants, wants a character to be perfectly symmetrical or, you know, whatever, have uh, certain proportions in certain areas correct and others say more exaggerated or you know bigger muscles bigger boobs bigger butt you know whatever um smaller everything you know whatever they want is we have to be able to produce that and um it kind of turns you into like it, i think it just turns a lot of artists into a uh, subconsciously hyper observant and sometimes hyper critical um <laughs> group of people and it's just terrible it can be terrible i i, I understand some women don't get it, I guess. Men are so visual too, so that doesn't help. I think when it comes to men critiquing the female form. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, you just want to segment your character, though. Sorry, just getting off topic, but you want to segment your character um, by doing like the split, the split brush. Um, uh, what am I talking about? The uh, split curve, slice curve. Excuse me, slice curve. Um, so uh, let me. Uh, let me get out of let me get out of away from this for a second, and I'll bring you to let's say this is your person, just for the sake of it. Um, let's do this really quick. Okay, so uh, let's make some proportions like super. This be a starfish. <laughs> it's a starfish person. It's uh, what's his name from SpongeBob SquarePants. I've never watched the show, so I'm not really aware of all their names. I'm sorry. It was like, is it like Steven or what? What's the what's the starfish's name? It has like a very Patrick, isn't it Patrick? Right, that's it. Sorry, I know everyone everyone knows all these things, and I'm, I just never got into it. All right, so this is a starfish person. <laughs> uh, look at that beautiful topology. It's just gorgeous. Um. So this person is going to be a little blown up, all right? So let's say this is the pose they're in. They're in their starfish tea pose, ready to die. The gingerbread man. It could be a gingerbread man, too, because it's Christmas. Um, so the way I would approach it, I would think, is um, you just want to segment it, right? You'd want to make sure that uh, you've got a copy of this model with your textures and everything ready to go um, that are fine. Because you're going to be chopping this up and making new topologies, so you're going to have to redo the UVs um, or do clever ways of like putting a bunch of chunky meat and other things on the gaps where you're closing holes, so that it's it's a manifold piece. Because everything that, of course, comes out of the body would still have, can't be hollow, can't be an open, you know, faced object. It has to be a chunk of meat, uh, depending again how you know close to the camera and everything, and how how detailed you need the thing to be. But then I would just start, you know, <laughs> arbitrarily making some decisions about what parts would be blown off and, you know, how that would look. You probably don't need symmetry. Um, you know, I mean, you could go down this rabbit hole then too and be like, all right, and then you split by, you know, you, whatever. Let's say he loses both legs and it's just a torso here. Poor guy becomes a quadriplegic or just dies, I guess. Um, so sad it's not even funny um <laughs> so then you want to do um split groups um so you want to do uh group split it's undoable you say yep and so you know i mean depending on your topology needs you know you may not want to just 
do this, but this I'm just doing this for the sake of it. Essentially, one way or the other, you'd want to close holes. However you do that, it's it's your prerogative. Um, so you have your you have your thorax, and then you've got all your limbs, right? So we just go down the line here, just close holes. Get all your bits, your bits and bobs, your pieces of starfish man. I like dark humor. Uh, and uh, the macabre. Um, so then you got all your parts, right? So we just cycle through that. Do, 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 do. And I mean, from here, I think it's just you'd run it through a, you know, you'd run it through an animation. Um, you know, you'd put it through a physics simulation, some sort of sim that would have the body parts have weight. And, you know, rig it for that. Um, make them all collision objects and have it just, you know, and then of course, just throw in, in, in here, you know, you know, in between, or, you know, you'd probably want to maybe, uh, you know, depending on how your, your physics simulation is going to go, maybe push in a little bit here, then add your bone or whatever, and then put in a bunch of separate objects. That would be the meat, right? Like muscle pieces and whatever. Um, you could, you know, put them in that little pocket and then same thing here. I mean, since this would be enclosing. You obviously don't want to disturb your seam lines because you don't want it to be to appear seamless, um, you know. And then if you, of course, you wanted to do that, so you could just do like mask, mask everything, but this area so you don't disturb the rest. And then maybe make a little pocket in here too, kind of, you know. Depending on again, are these limbs going to be seen? And I put a bunch of bits and chunks in there, and of course make it all raggedy. I wouldn't just make it a perfect little, you know, cup like this. But I'm just showing you a general concept. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be my approach to how you prepare a character to be blown to pieces. <laughs> so there you go. Um, does that answer? Does that help? Um, dark. Oh, come on. Hello. Oh, derp. There we go. How did I unclick that? Um, sorry, I'm just going to check. Did I answer the question? <laughs> Genesis, thank you. Uh, what's your favorite power effect to sculpt? I'm not sure what you mean by power effect. You maybe have to clarify what do you mean by power effect? What, like superpower or like... Like a power sculpt, like just like this is a really powerful thing that you can use in ZBrush. Um, maybe give me a little bit more clarification. Uh, how was the time with proportions of the human figure? Yeah, man, the human figure is challenging, dude. You got to you got to observe. You got to look at a lot of people. Right? I'd say do life drawing, but now we can't be around people for who knows how long. So if you have a friend, a wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, a significant other who'd be willing to pose for you. Preferably in skin tight clothes or naked, um, that would help you really understand human anatomy from a real perspective, from a real person. Um, otherwise, of course, there's the internet. So you can find as many references as you'd like in, in any shape and form, I'm sure. Um, but it's better to look in real life, I think, just because it, it, it helps you, you know, understand dimensionality. And that practice is just, um, I think it's very crucial for any artist to know um, good human proportions. You have to really be observant of. Um, you know, the real world and the real muscles and skin on top of them and adipose tissue and everything else in between. Um, seeing it from real life, I think, just, just you know, really um, helps you. Uh, and then just draw them, you know, just draw, draw, draw. Um, or sculpt, I guess, but I think drawing is a little more immediate and kind of gets your brain there maybe a little bit faster, perhaps. I don't know, everyone's different. Um, it's just faster, you know, two dimensions, of course. But, um, but yeah, you know sculpts from from looking at real life too uh okay so genesis like cyclop laser beams or canvas connect power <laughs> or yeah you know what i mean okay gotcha yeah yeah yeah. it's funny you asked that because I, I i said in other streams in the past like i'm not the biggest superhero fan i don't have any problem with them really i'm just not like oh my god like i don't you know i don't get, i don't get off on uh you know after infinity was it infinity war end game end game after that i was like all right i'm good i don't really don't need any more superhero movies like for a long time marveled out dude um 
I mean, they're all fun and nice, whatever. I'm just tired. I'm just kind of sick of them, personally. Like, it, it has to be really just an incredible story for me to really care. But it just feels like all the comic movies are really, like, you know, weighted and ball, ball and chained to the comics, of course. That's what made them popular. So they have to appease those fans and also make it kind of kitty friendly or family friendly. And, they, you know, you hide everything. Someone gets killed or decapitated, but it's right behind something else or off screen. Or, you know what I mean? There's no blood. Like, the boys is the only thing that kind of is pushing the, the rated R superhero thing, which is which is fun. Um but even that, sort of sometimes feels like they're just going a little too far with it. Or not too far, like I'm grossed out, but like, you know, it's like, it's a little excessive, like, eh. or find a more, you know, find a more ingenuitive, like, you know, more um, unique way to take out people with superpowers instead of just, oh, they blew up. Oh, they, you know, okay, well, it's like, we saw that with, um, what was it, Screamers? Screeners? Scanners? Scanners. Uh, scanners, right? <laughs> guy's head blows up when the, just the other guy was using... Was it Michael Ironside was using his kinetic mental power? I don't know. I just feel like so much of that, you know, there needs to be more innovation and a little bit more creativity in powers and all that stuff. But I, yeah, I'm just kind of tired of superheroes. But a favorite power? I don't know, man. Does sculpt? I don't know. I've never, I've never really aspired to sculpt superheroes in general. I have a few things here and there, but... Um, I don't know. Power to sculpt. I mean, I love flight. I think flight is just fantastic. But that's why I'm working on like Cupid, right? And the angelic. I think that's that's so cool. And um, it is it's, it connects to the human desire for that, right? We always everyone wants to fly. Well, most people do, I guess. Maybe not everybody. <laughs> um. Anyway, sorry. So yeah, I don't know. I can't really give you an answer. I'm sorry. I don't really have a favorite power to sculpt. I guess flight. But it's like you don't really. That's the one thing that's sort of like intangible because you just see wings or movement, but it's like it's like you don't sculpt air, <laughs> so it's like you just have to have things suspended in the air, I guess. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, not a better answer. Um, taking a salmon from Spider-Man movie, his body looks like particles of sand when coming out. How can you do something like that? Idea using nano mesh, but can't exhibit. Yeah, Ofari, you can't um, you can't really do like particle effects in ZBrush. I mean, you'd have to. The best thing you could do is like do um, yeah, like nano mesh or um, micro mesh. You know, so you have a really high density, a really high density mesh. Um, you know, like this or higher, like like millions and millions of polys, and then turn every polygon into a sphere or a object of some kind. But then you're you're gonna be getting into the you know easily up into the millions and millions tens of millions or hundreds of millions or more polys uh and so it would make more sense to do any kind of particle simulation in houdini um plus i mean you're not really going to simulate it that much in in zbrush other than it falling down um you know or falling up depending on how you put gravity where you put gravity but you're not going to get explosive you know movement uh, so you have to do it in another program. Got to learn Maya or Houdini, either of those, or as 3ds Max. Um, that's or Blender, even I guess. I think you can do that in Blender. Um, sorry. So anyway, I'm not sculpting. I'm talking too much. Um, also, do I have any courses up? Um, I mean, coming up. You know, I gotta see if my my time with because uh, there's a there's a contractual amount of time that I'm obligated to um, not share the same information that I use with, um, that I have on Nomen. So I have a course on Nomen for 3D printing, but that was about three or four years ago now. And I feel like there was at least a two year hold or something before I could disseminate that same information. So I think I'm free and clear, but I got to double check. Um, but I've been thinking about starting a Patreon and, uh, in a discord connected to that, um, to start sort of coaching people and doing more private sort of, or group, small group, um, classes to start teaching people kind of the ins and outs of, um, you know, kind of expert 3d printing and pushing your printer to the limit, um, and experimentation, that kind of thing. So, I mean, that's more of my, my expertise when it comes to, um, you know, I mean, I can do all kinds of things in ZBrush too, but I feel like that's a niche that I have that is a little still maybe more like it will draw more people in some ways. Um, cause there's so many people who are great at ZBrush and who, uh, who have great courses out there and so many people who do it for free. We teach it for free so it's like it's hard to compete with that unless people have some sort of you know deep connection to the uh to the person teaching which i don't know that <laughs> i don't know i'm not i mean i'm not self-aware enough i don't know i haven't had that kind of i don't think i have that kind of draw where it would be worth um the time and investment to uh to create a lot of courses that um 
I don't know. I'm not sure there'd be that many people that really care to hear my take on the same information that you could get probably faster, better from someone else. Like Michael, Michael Pavlovich is amazing. He's got so many great um, videos on YouTube. Um, that's the reason why he was on there today with Paul and, and Joseph. I mean, he's the dude's put in the work and he constantly does. And he's consistent with quality and conciseness and, uh, you know, so, um, I don't know. I mean, it depends what kind of courses are you looking for, I guess. That'd be a better question. Um, but if you wanted to know any course I have, I mean, the only one I have right now is a Nomen course on 3D printing. It's called Mastering uh, 3D Printing for the 3D Artist, Desktop 3D Printing. So if you have a Form 2 or 3 or Form 3L or um, an FDM machine, you know, MakerBot, I mean, now MakerBot's old, I guess, an Ultimaker, uh, MakerBot's still around, I guess. Um, you know, and I, I forget what other... I think what other brands are out there now. I feel like there's a lot of other... There's so many FDM machines or FFF machines that have come out. It's hard to even... I, I, I don't use them much anymore any, anyway. Um, I just use my... Primarily use my SLA printer printers. So um, that's been my focus. Um, but of course, the principles for FDM are the same. They haven't changed in a long time. So um, but yeah, if anyone wants to learn 3D printing, my course is out there uh, on Nomen. Uh, the Nomen Workshop, and uh, yeah, I've been thinking about doing that. I'm also going to start a podcast soon, um, very soon. I'm hoping this month I can get the um, the first episode uh, recorded, and maybe even the second, but we'll see if I can at least get the first one done. The only thing holding it up, really, at this point, is just, uh, it's just I want to have a really nice intro, and I want to do some of it in Unreal, and I'm still kind of piecing together my knowledge of Unreal, and it's not even that I think I need to piece any more knowledge together, I just need the time. I just need the time to, to make it, right, just to put it together, and... Um, so that's, you know, and that just is, is burdened by, oh man, I moved it a little bit. Crap. Um, that's burdened by uh, the need for an income. So, you know, I'm busy uh, working on other projects to make a living. And then in turn, uh, it doesn't allow me the uh, extra time when I'm not dead tired from looking at a screen all day. It doesn't allow me all that much time to, uh, you know, uh, prepare extra side work. So I'm struggling to get my short film moving forward while also, um, you know, working on all this stuff. Um, don't crash, please. Don't crash. There we go. Okay. Um... Eh, it's good enough for now. All right, moving up. Just fill out the muscles a little bit. I always do a little polish here. Uh, where are we at? Three o'clock. All right. In about a half hour, I got to bounce, unfortunately, because I got to get back to work. This is kind of my break <laughs> right now. My break is working on other projects and hanging out with you guys. Um, anyway, sorry. I'm starting out balance this the chat, too. And I have everything in a different position right now. I'm using my Cintiq as a Intuos because uh, the streaming didn't want to show my... I think it has some problem with 4K, maybe. It didn't want to show the 4K screen. I want to do 2K. So now, anyway. Ugh. Crazy day. Um, yeah, Genesis, thanks for all the questions, though. Uh, what about Captain Planet? <laughs> Not as sweaty as this comic nerds. Have I seen the boys? It's refreshing, man. Boys on point. I fell into the depths of doom and come back alive. Flight is dope. So many things to consider when making them look like Either they're about to fly or already in flight. Yep, it's true. Um, instant subscriber if you have a Patreon. Oh, thank you. That's nice to hear. 100%. Add you on LinkedIn. I'd like to get your mentorship. Oh, Genesis. Thanks, man. Thank you, girl. I <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Um, thank you. Forgive me for not uh, recognizing the name. Um, But yeah, thanks. That's really nice to hear. Um, yeah, I really should start a Patreon. My sister was even telling me to do it a while back, and I just um, 
I don't know. I think back then too, it was I, things were just different, and uh, I don't know. I think I was being a little little stupid. I just felt like I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't, didn't want to. It was so dumb of me, but I kind of was like, isn't it like digital panhandling? But it's not. <laughs> I just think it's. I mean, if you're providing a nice service to people and, and they're feeling a lot of benefit from what you're providing them, then you know it. Uh, it really shouldn't be uh, anything like that. Is this why is that still forming like that? That is weird. Okay, there we go. I think there was like remnant of a mask. Alright. Sorry, this whole like weird kind of the crimping that was happening there was just annoying me. And I just wanted it to be a bit more smooth. All right, so then you got that little bit of your uh, ulnar, your ulnar notch kind of poking out there. The one great thing about sculpting humans is that you always have reference on you too, in general, um, to a degree. <laughs> And of course, that depends on who you're replicating and, you know, all that. All right. Man, she looks like super skinny here, though. It's like... It's almost, almost a little too thin. <laughs> Probably do some, give her a little bit of an ab workout, maybe slight. And that belly button twist feels a little extreme, slight stretching. Is the stream quality okay, guys? By the way, because this is the first time I've ever been streaming from a Mobile Studio Pro, and it's uh. I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared that things might cut out. But it looks like it's holding fast so far. So, so let me know, guys, if it's uh, if it's getting jittery or anything's a little weird or off. Um, Doug Tech, what is up, sir? Genesis man, okay. <laughs> no worries, dude. 1080p clear. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Genesis is... I've only met female Genesis is actually. Genesi? What is the... Uh, <laughs> what is the plural of Genesis? Genesi, Genesis is... So right now... Oh, I'll just say... What I'm doing is I'm holding Alt and then pulling downward or drawing downward on the... Uh, canvas here with the move brush and that just kind of pops out pulls toward the camera whatever or actually excuse me not toward the camera it pulls in this case it's toward the camera literally but it pulls along the normals the surface of the normals and pulls outward see so i could if i was here like um it's like holding alt here and then pulling out or pushing inward you know it will it will do that too um so it's along the surface so it follows it rather than only being camera driven you know, because if I try to pull toward the camera without holding alt, it'll just move down like that. It'll just smudge down like along a flat plane, 90 degrees to the camera. But if I hold alt and pull, it's coming out or it goes in. So that's a fun little trick um, I use all the time. But I just mentioned it because I know that there was a long period of time where I didn't know that. And uh, it's very useful. Um, I love I love doing that. So kind of giving her a six pack because these are supposed to be Greek gods. So as such, their bodies should be in immaculate form. Basically the uh, epitome of the human figure. 
So, so I try to epitomize it. And right now I'm doing this all from memory. Uh, it's just basic. It's just basic muscle, basic muscle groups. And I'll, you know, like a sketch, like anything, you start with the, the base forms and you just refine more detail. Um, not sure how detailed I'm going to go with these. I mean, I like to go detailed, but at the same time, it, it starts to feel a little weird when they're so human, they're so realistic, but you want it to look like stone. You know, there, there's a, there's a, I don't know. It's a, it's a strange, strange feeling. It's like, oh, it's a cool statue, but it looks a real, like, I mean, I guess that's not a bad thing. But I just keep thinking about, you know, if I saw this in the museum, I've never seen that much detail, like the poor detail. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that you can really get that out of marble. I mean, I'm sure you can get that out of marble, but I've never seen anyone, any classic sculptors go to that level. It's always usually still a really incredibly well-formed, smooth surface. And, uh, yeah, I don't know that uh, that you'd get poor, you'd want poor detail in a stone statue. It might just look weird. It's looking better. It's looking more realistic already. It was just too like, like sucked in, like she was sucking in her, her stomach. And instead of that, I want it to seem more muscular, of course, strong. Strong yet feminine seems to be a hard concept for our culture to grasp, but I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of, I always love strong women. I mean, there's some great movies that are gonna do it okay. I mean, usually it's just strong, maybe not as feminine, but you know, I think Ripley was a great character. Sarah Connor's a great mom, even though she loses it a little bit. <laughs> um, there are definitely strong women who do appear feminine. Um, but it's, uh, so it was a mixed bag, you know? Oh, I didn't realize I had the hair going through there. Oops. All right, I guess I'll have to... Hmm, what to do, what to do... I'll push this in a little bit, I guess. I'll do a 50-50 here. When you have stuff intersecting and either one's soft, you know, I think the hair might have a little bit more weight to it. So that might be, in, in, you know, affecting the, uh, it'd be affecting the cloth a bit more. But. It's okay. Genesisters, Genesisters. <laughs> Stream quality seems fine. Cool. Thank you, Timothy. Appreciate it. Did you guys catch the uh, earlier Pixelogic stream, the live stream where Paul and Joseph and Michael were, uh, and Ofer, Ofer did the opening. Did you guys catch it? Are you guys um, runoffs of that, or did you just know, or just see the stream pop up on live and YouTube now? go all righty I go back and forth with the whole like basic bikini covering kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like, I want to be respectful. I don't want to seem like, I don't want to be creepy or weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's so many guys who just ogle women and it's like, I love the female form as much as the next man. I mean, I won't deny that, but I'm also, I don't, I'm not a perv. I don't want to like 
I give that, you know, I don't want to give that air about my work at all either. Being like, oh, it's like pervy. Like, look at, you know, private areas. Um, so I don't want it to ever come across that way because that's just not my personality. I was never raised that way. Uh, I have a sister and a mom I'm close to, so I, I sympathize. And um, so I think there's always this, there's always this weird line of like, you know, art and beauty versus salaciousness and. Uh, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground. I mean, the human form is beautiful. absolutely. Um, but I also just kind of want to be, be respectful and, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, what, where, where do you draw the line between like sexy and like pinup and then like salacious or kind of pervy, you know what I mean? Like there's all this, like, there's this whole, this whole kind of, there's Venn diagram, I guess, the, of intersecting concepts. And it's like, I'm not so conservative to say all nudity is pornography or all nudity is, you know, repulsive or, or you know, taboo or whatever. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'm also like, you know, keeping things a little bit hidden from your eye, I think, can add a little bit of sexiness to something, too. You know what I mean? Like the right. So I guess what I'm going back to is kind of like, yeah, the femininity and yet strength. You know, femininity is not to be beautifully feminine uh, is not is not overtly sexual it's not slutty there's a there's a big difference there between um one and the other and i think that sadly our culture confuses a lot of ladies about that um and the men don't help <laughs> dudes aren't helping with that context i think they uh because dudes are just you know so many men um it's it's, it's like gravity it's like a downward slope right it's just it's easy for people to be very sexually minded because it's a part of our existence it's how we all came into being but I think that there is there is something to be said for uh, time and place and and what you perpetuate, what you put out into the world and what you encourage. Um, and I want to encourage, um, I don't even want to say modesty, because I think it's like anyone with common sense should have some modicum of modesty. Um, but um, again, I don't know. I just keep, I don't know. I just keep debating all this in my head about this piece and whatnot. And um you know, I mean, it's pretty damn revealing as it is, obviously. Um, and like the original piece, this is the sequel to the, another piece that I already finished. Um, you know, he's going to have kind of like the 300 briefs, <laughs> you know, so I already, I already kind of like eunuched him, <laughs> castrated him over there. Just to, just so don't like, you don't constantly have like dick and balls in your face. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, eh, I don't think people need that. I don't think people want that. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to be dealing with it all the time anyway. So like, um, I don't, I'm not even selecting him. So I'm not smoothing. I'm like, why is it not smoothing? Um, so yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? What is What does the chat think about everything I was saying about, uh, about all that, about nudity and about, you know, having some sort of propriety, some sort of sense of decency while still being, elegant and beautiful and what do you guys think about all that and i'm sure a lot of dudes would just say like hey you know whatever show it all but i'm sure there's people here with you know a little bit uh more mature perspective than being just like show us it all um but yeah what do you guys think Xeris, what's up? Hello, hello. There's fine balance between... Oh. It's fine balance being respectful to the female body and yet still being able to sculpt sexiness. Yeah. A few mental struggle if you... Serious projects and then it gets too complicated... That I leave them halfway. Second, my relationship is kind of in unbalanced situation. Makes hard focus. <laughs> Mentally tackle it. Okay, well, I mean, I can do what I can in the next like fifteen minutes. Um, <laughs> always great to get female perspective on sculpt. Yeah, right. I know. I should ask a couple of my female friends to take a look at this. And I mean, I've only had people say beautiful. Like, it's beautiful. We love it. We love the idea. It's coming together great. I mean, I've only heard nice things, but um, yeah. I mean, I wonder what they would say if like the breasts were exposed or her, you know 
her uh, lower section were exposed. Not that I mean that that just feels like the most like I don't know. It's it's interesting with female anatomy. There's almost very little, you know, showing versus a dude, right? Because internal versus external. Um, but um, I don't know. Still, it's just I guess just because generally women are more vulnerable, you know, physically to uh, harm than men, and they're, they're generally you know physically a bit weaker um you know upper body strength absolutely um so all that taken into effect it just it, it just all you know it all affects the psychology of of you know i think about what we're putting out there and, and how we're portraying women um, and this piece isn't so much about sexuality as it is about um an adventure and the you know a beautiful moment captured of their ascension you know escape um so the whole you know the whole idea behind this is it's, yeah i want them to be like they want them both to look like insanely perfected you know human uh examples you know examples of the human form but um and in that i think there's an inherent just natural like a healthy human body is just inherently attractive because it's such a beautiful such a beautiful machine right it's such an incredibly elegant form and then of course our biology plays into it where it's like yeah we find that attractive for a reason right we find health and fullness and strength naturally appealing biologically it's just, it's our dna it's hardwired into our brains so like imagine if sex wasn't pleasurable like the human race would cease to exist if it was like the most noble thing the most painful thing to do is to rep reproduce we'd have very we'd have very few people in the world <laughs> it'd be such a noble act it's almost like kind of a shame that <laughs> it doesn't work out that way. You know what I mean? So like only the best parents and the most self-sacrificial and the most, you know, truly just I'll lay down my life for this person to exist like that. Imagine what the, I mean, the world would be a radically different place. I think that would be incredible to, to think about that. That's a kind of almost an interesting concept for a movie. I wonder about like, you sort of take out that kind of sexuality out of it in a sense and make it such a noble thing where it's not really then maybe it wouldn't be sex it'd be something else similar but um just the idea of like human replication being a, a truly painful process um and i'm sure i'm it's in a real world example might be i guess people who you know go for in vitro fertilization i'm sure that's not comfortable at all for the lady um you know that's an interesting thing. That'd be an interesting interview to have with somebody. Is like that that level of desire and love for a child, where you have to go through very uncomfortable, you know, or depending on the circumstances, you know, variably uncomfortable circumstances to uh, to have a child. I mean, that's that's definitely a, an incredibly commendable and a noble act. I think in today's world. It's probably the only example we the closest to that, that kind of concept of suffering to, I mean, of course, birth is painful too, but I mean, I'm talking about just even creating life is, uh, is a challenge. Anyway, sorry, I'm just rambling. I'm just <laughs> funny trail of thoughts. Um, what do we got going on here? Um, for art perspective, as long as being open-minded, why not? <laughs> uh, so my wife see, sees my work, it usually depends on the reason why the sculpt, sculpt's breasts are exposed. If it's part of the character's personality, or, or and for sure if the pose is just too sexual, yeah. Depends on how people define things, but as an artist, being true to your art, why bothers why bother people's thoughts? A lot of statues exposing stuff, so really don't bother. <laughs> Um, so sorry, going back to, um, Euseris, I hope I'm saying that right, Euseris, um, <laughs> Siri thought I was talking to her. Um, so your question, dude, you have two questions. You're saying you're struggling with just starting Zebra's projects and they get too complicated and leave them halfway. Dude, that's like, first of all, that's normal. Like, don't feel bad about that or don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Um, a lot of us... A lot of us start zebra sculpts and don't finish them or come back to them. I'm, I'm, there's some stuff that I started years ago and I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish them. Like there's still, 
I've been brewing ideas about how to develop certain pieces in my in my head, and uh, it's definitely there's definitely some pieces I've worked on and off for years, and it's just because I don't have a deadline, and it's a passion project or it's like a love, it's a piece of love uh, that I've been working on. Um, some stuff for like this Echo the Dolphin pitch that I'm still working on here and there. Um, and, uh, I'm going to be sending some stuff to Ed and Enziata shortly. Um, We've been working on some Vortex stuff, talking about that. The aliens from uh, Echo the Dolphin, if you guys remember. This is a, a printed head of one of them. Um, let me see if I can enlarge this for you guys. Just for a minute. So this is a cool 3D print of a skull. It's so white, it's kind of blowing out. I'm not sure if it's going to focus. Um, but yeah, this was a cool skull. Um, you know, the original creatures were very much like kind of ripped off of Giger's alien, obviously. And it's funny because in the game you basically see them only from like this angle, this angle, and that's about it. <laughs> you basically see them the queen from the front when you finally reach her at the end of the game and you see the drones basically from the side. Like I think that's really kind of all all that you see. Anyway, it's hard to get this to focus because it's so bright with the with the white. There we go. Maybe that that helps. It's hard to show this without dropping it. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. It's a skull. It's got a whole bunch of micro detail in there that you can't really see with the, the way the light's blowing it out. But um, anyway, so working on stuff like that. That's stuff that I've I've come back to after years, and I'm still finishing up a, a big piece with that. And uh, anyway, so you know, a don't feel bad about uh, don't feel bad about taking your time and getting too complicated with some things and dropping them. Come back to them if you like them enough, you know, um, or simplify them, rip stuff out, you know, do the whole thing. Sometimes I do this too, where it's like I'm working on it right now. I'm working on a complex uh, piece with multi multiple parts and to simplify it just to kind of like to not feel so frazzled and so overwhel overwhelmed with, you know, a project. Um, often what I'll do is what I'll show you right now. So let's say I just wanted to focus on her hair. Um, but there's many other parts So whatever. I'll just go to the star, you know, center that import that piece so just insert come here to insert click that pick out your thing pick out your piece your subtool and work on this and then let's say oh well you know i need some other parts or i just want to be able to focus just on her you know so you can go down this list and just you know pick all the parts that are her and do the same thing and just keep bringing them bringing them into oh that's the blow up guy <laughs> get rid of him uh you know and keep bringing them into here and then I'll import, you know, exactly in place. And you just, just keep building out one character and then save that as a separate, as a whole separate sub or a whole separate tool, ZTL. Um, and just use that as a way to kind of like focus on one piece at a time of a more complicated piece. Uh, I think that's that's a fine way of dealing with it. I mean, the other, the other issues, dude, I mean, if your relationship is on the rocks or unbalanced unbalanced situation what you said hard to focus so is that meaning like you're split between how much you pour into your work and your passion with sculpting or art versus the time with your significant other uh is that what you're referring to your wife or husband i'm not sure what <laughs> which genders you guys are um is that is that what you're referring to is it unbalanced because of that or are you just saying like are you guys like gonna break up or because i know countless artists who've gotten divorced and remarried other people um or have gotten through a really rocky time and then figured it out and it's it's more often than not it seems like it's the guys who are just like so on fire for their work and the women are the ones who are like why aren't you paying attention to me i don't feel loved i don't feel like we have enough time together um and they'll always say that that you know i think there's all these there's all these different catchphrases out there of like you know art is always going to be your mistress and that kind of thing you know all these romanticized, silly, um, but true, uh, you know, cliches about artists and their their love for their work, and that universally causes problems. Uh, and I'm not sure that there's any one solution other than being with a partner who, being with a husband or wife who understands, uh, hopefully, who enjoys your artwork, and not just understands, because that kind of feels cold. If it's if you're with somebody who's like, I understand they're into that. I mean, that's, I feel like you're just kind of, eh, that's, I'm like, I pick someone else. If I knew that that's an attitude, like if I was starting to date a girl or starting to see somebody and, you know, and the lady was like, 
Oh, you like art? No, that's nice. Or oh, you work in you work in films or you know entertainment? Mm. I mean, I don't want her to be obsessed with what I do at all. I mean, not for my ego, not for my sake. I want there just to be harmony between us. Like, you know, I could easily see myself with somebody in the medical field because I used to work in the medical field like full time. So um, I have a deep fascination with the human condition and the human body, the human form and medicine and technology. I'm a huge nerd in those areas. Um, so I could easily adapt. You know, I have many interests and I'm, I'm well versed in a lot of them. So, uh, you know, I find myself able to connect with a lot of people um but i would hope that whoever you're you know whoever i'd be with that they would at least have a curiosity and in some sort of appreciation for my ambitions and what i do you know moving into moving definitely toward film and you know directing and writing um so i need to be somebody who loves movies who loves a good story right even if it's a few movies but a lot of books you know or some video games and more movies or whatever but there needs to be some common ground for sure and if there isn't it's just not going to work it's just going to be too much of a struggle. Um, <laughs> well, um, so anyway, I'm sorry, you stars. I don't know what exactly what you mean. No, but I'm balancing. Mean, it's not in a healthy state right now. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm missing a few things. Uh. Oh, is it an alien skull? Yeah, so it's the Vortex Alien from Echo the Dolphin, this old video game from the 90s that's a great game. I love it. Um, it's a great story. Um, I'm friends with the creator of it, and uh, we've been doing little things together here and there. Um, Genesis, yeah, that was printed on the Forum 3. Yep. Um, one tip, get your significant other involved in your sculpts, maybe through feedback or references, even teach him or her in the process what you're doing. Yeah, that's for sure. It's a good idea. Show them your thought process and why you like what you're doing. If that interest, if they're interested, <laughs> if they're interested, marry them. <laughs> nice, good job, Genesis. Yeah, I mean that's that's key is finding someone who supports. You know what I mean? Like that's it is important. You know, you need your spouse to be also your best friend. Um, this makes sense, right? Um, a lot of people, I think, a lot of divorces happen because people just get married for the wrong reasons. A lot of it's lust or money. Usually, that's male versus female. Uh, you know, but that's the general, that's the general kind of negative side of things. I'm a, I'm a bit of a cynic. <laughs> it's, I'm also picky, so it's hard for me to find. Uh, I have a lot of good friends. I shouldn't say a lot. I have, you know, like anybody, as the older you get, the fewer close friends you have. That's just normal. Um, but I have, I mean, yeah, a fair amount of friends, and I have a few that are very close and very good. And uh, it just, and I'm a particular person. I'm an artist. I'm, I'm very passionate about the work I do in general, and I'm. Someone who spends hours and hours and hours working on something, often into the late of the night. You know, uh, it's not uncommon for you to go to bed at like four or five in the morning. Um, it's not healthy though, so I try to stay more in the one to two a.m. range and try to get up at a more decent hour. Um, lately, I've been doing that because I have a more um, steady gig right now. So um, at the moment, um, but um, yeah, I mean, you uh, Cyrus, without knowing the details of your, your relationship, your private. <laughs> life i can't really give you i mean i don't know other than it depends what the area of contention is what the point of contention is um i think it's uh any relationship will have its challenges um but this is one thing i do know and this is what i tell people all the time um friends you know dealing with issues no one likes drama like no one has time no one should have time for drama i mean unless it's like you're in a car accident unless something has happened to you that's out of your control if two people are, hey buddy, if two people are having a lot of contention, if they're having a lot of tension, fights, anger, or you know, resentment toward each other, and they're not even like past a year or two of li of hopefully not living together, because I don't think living together is a good idea either, really. I mean, it can work. Obviously, it works for some people. I would advocate not to live with somebody before you marry them. I've seen it work out better usually. Um, but every circumstance is different, so I'm not gonna like cast judgment on somebody. I'm not judging you as like, oh my god, but I just I just prefer not to not to live with someone I'm dating. Plus it just makes breakups that much worse. I mean, oh it's like it's like your body and your brain are like your body and your heart are like you're married, but legally in every other way you're not. And so it's like I'm like, dude, if you love that person that much, I think within a year or so of time, maybe a year or two, you should know the person well enough to know if you want to be with them forever or not. Uh, and I usually figure that out pretty quick, hence why I don't 
just like no, i don't look to use anybody or stick around in relationships um if it's not gonna work out it's not gonna work out move on don't hurt somebody don't drag them on don't lead them on just just end it rip the bandit off move on stay friendly if you can uh i'm friendly with almost every single one of my exes um all two of them no i'm just kidding <laughs> it's more than that but uh, all one of them uh no um but so what i do say to everybody is simply if you're if if you're fighting a lot or if there's a lot of tension and it's this early on in the relationship meaning it's like less than a year or it's like you know if it's past a year and you guys haven't committed to be like we're gonna get married here's a ring like we're planning this at least if it's not that far then you someone's just playing a game or someone's just looking for the bigger better deal you know and that's another reason why i don't want to just just date anybody and just sort of just date to have fun all the time um because if you, if i know that i'm not in love with this person if i'm not in love with her and my eyes are going to be wandering i'm going to be looking for someone that i'm interested in right and i'm going to be considering other options that's really cruel and unfair to her and that's cruel and unfair to anyone else like i mean if a woman's doing that to a dude it's just as it's just as cruel and heartless so um that's just not being a good person it just there's no other way around it that's just being a douche um so that's why i don't just you know date around all the time or lead anyone on or anything it's just not worth it um so if it's this hard at the beginning it's probably not the right thing that's basically what i'm trying to say sorry um obviously i'm sure you guys get that um so when it comes to relationships yeah i mean that's that's the you know and i hate the cliches like there's more fish in the sea um <laughs> there's so many memes that show all these deformed fish I'm like yeah but these are the fish in the sea it's terrible <laughs> but um, i'm not sure if you guys have seen that meme but it's it's both funny and terrible um but uh yeah, man, I don't know. I mean, if you really are in love with this person, then obviously uh, try to work. You guys have to learn to work things out. That's just part of being in a relationship. That's part of being married. That's part of life. It's part of being friends with somebody. You guys have fights and you got to, like, figure it out. Be adults, you know, get over something. Someone needs to apologize or be the bigger person. Or even if you don't think you're wrong, but they want you to apologize, just apologize. Just get it over with. Try to see it from their perspective. Um learn to say you're i was wrong you're right of course that shouldn't be a one-sided lopsided thing all the time unless you're an idiot <laughs> i think both sides will make mistakes and in turn uh people should be apologizing to each other when necessary but i think that's part of growing up and learning to love somebody is you learn their ins and outs you learn what, what their triggers are what their uh, struggles are and you support them in those areas and you try to help them with like gracious advice right and soft gentle verbal nudges um i can be pretty blunt so i'm trying to i have to i have to work on that i think <laughs> uh i can be pretty direct about things uh, but i try not to be too too harsh um you know it's again it's 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 also like you know friends friends versus like someone you're in love with there's a there should be a big difference i would think to some degree not a whole you know you shouldn't be a whole you shouldn't be two-faced you shouldn't be a whole different person but i would hope you would treat your wife or your girlfriend or boyfriend significantly different and better than you know people who are not someone you're in love with <laughs> there should be a significant uh, delineation there in how you address those of course um i don't know man but it's like i don't know i don't know what your i don't know what your uh particular issues are um Cool, you say. Well, I hope it helped. I mean, again, it's just, just <laughs> I'm no professional. Uh, I am not married. <laughs> I'm not in any relationship, but I would love to meet the right woman for sure. Um, but I know also that my pursuits in life are uh, are not to just become a dad or a husband uh, or a boyfriend. Even that's not a, that's not like a primary goal in my life. Um, I mean, I would love to meet the right woman, absolutely, because I'm a passionate person and I, I love having fun and I'm a generous person when I'm with someone I'm, I'm in love with. But uh, that's that's rare. You know, I'm, I'm picky um, and I'm not everyone's cup of tea either. I mean, I know that that's part. I mean, it's like it's, you know, dudes get rejected way more than women because we try a lot more often. We often will say hello to somebody and try to get things going. And usually it's, you know, whatever. It depends on your approach. It depends who you are. But so, you know, we've all been there and it's, it's not fun um, and it gets old really you know plus it's like you know, I, you know I, I haven't really gone up and done the whole bar thing and forever uh, i don't typically ever do that really but um but it's like yeah i mean with how much we work in our field and how much time we put into it it's like how do you meet somebody these days 
I'm not a fan of Tinder. I've deleted all the apps. I tried a bunch of them in the past, and it just didn't yield much. And that's... I think those apps are just... They're such a horrible way to kind of meet somebody, because it's just a photo and some sort of quippy line, and, you know? And it's it's like... It's, it's the most inhuman way of meeting humans. It's like shopping for a person. I just... I resent that. I really just like... The idea of meeting them through friends, you know, but we can't really have parties right now. Can't really go many places or <laughs> meeting them in the grocery store or like somewhere where there's some sort of shared, you know, meeting them at a convention or, you know, those are great places perhaps, you know, where you have common ground already where, you know, grocery store, it's like, well, we're human, we need food. So there's no common ground there other than we're, we're, we're alive. But, uh, you know, conventions or um, trade shows or through friends, you know, that's... That's, I think, the best way to meet somebody. But, you know, love finds people in the most random places, in the most crazy random ways. So, who knows? Uh, anyway, long bunny trails. But, Eucerus, uh, I, hope, I hope it works out, dude. I hope uh, I hope you figure things out. Um, I've got to get going. I've got to uh, got to finish up some other work here. So, anyway, um, just wanted to fill my commitments. And I'm cutting a little short, but I've got to go, guys. So, anyway, thanks a lot. Um... Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, all reconnect here uh, in the new year. Because I'm not sure. I think I have one more stream this, this month. And that's it. So, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let me introduce the other Genesters. Yeah, it's hilarious. Alright, guys. I will uh, talk with you guys again soon. And uh, yeah, stay well. Take care. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll see you guys before then. And uh, yeah, we'll see.